Well, this is Dr. Stan here at Radio Liberty, coming to you from the hills overlooking beautiful and picturesque Monterey Bay and, and bringing you the news behind the news, the story behind the story. And we're going to be talking about what really is going on behind the scenes. Now, most people look at what's going on today about the battle between the Republican presidential nominee and the Democrat presidential nominee. And and we're looking and seeing what's going on over in the Near East and the Middle East, the threats of war, what's going on financially, the very real possibility that we're going to see a major financial collapse. And we're looking at all the material and objective things going on. But, of course, you really can't understand what is taking place unless you understand that there is a supernatural dimension to everything. There is another dimension out there, certainly if you believe in the Bible, why you see all sorts of supernatural things are happening. Certainly, Jesus bringing someone back from the dead, walking on water, commanding the storm to cease, and it ceases, healing lepers. Is the Bible simply telling stories, or is this real? And if you believe the Bible, you have to believe there's a supernatural element. And that supernatural element is playing a very large factor, a very large part of explaining what is going on today. With that as a background, Pastor Doug Riggs, thanks very much for being with us. Well, thank you, Dr. Stan, for having me back on your program. Well, you go ahead and pick up the story. Tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go from there. As a pastor, I've been working with those that are trauma-based mind control victims of satanic ritual abuse since the mid-80s, and it's been a growing and progressive experience for me in really learning what this is about. It's not just about demonization. It's about the fragmentation and the splitting of the person's identity through purposeful trauma. This results in the person's identity being fragmented, and then you can program different parts of a person's identity. A whole internal world is developed through specific kinds of protocols that were developed by Dr. Joseph Mengele. And through the years, we have learned the process of what's going on with these people, and it's a long, arduous journey for people to come out from this background, especially those that have been groomed to bring in the Antichrist, to bring in the New World Order. And one of the most amazing things that we've had to deal with is to see the way people have been specifically structured and programmed infiltrate the church so that the church becomes compromised, it becomes weakened in terms of its spiritual impact because people that are programmed and loaded up with spirit, they create an atmosphere that weakens the testimony of Jesus and the effectiveness of the church. Well, you know, Doug, I think the hardest thing is for the average Christian, the average church goer to believe that there really are people out there who are programmed, first of all, to believe in this idea of a one-world government. They tie into secret societies. They have dissociated personalities. But even more than that, that they actually have been assigned to infiltrate the church to undermine the Christian message, and that the battle really is an effort to to destroy Christianity. Doug, you know, I think that it's so difficult for people to really believe that this sort of thing really goes on. But I have no question it does. It's simply the average individual never hears about this. They never really hear anybody who's actually worked with these individuals. This is not imaginary. It must be very real to you as you talk to these people and try to counsel them and bring them into a personal relationship with our Lord. Oh, yes. I've known Dr. Preston Bailey for a number of years. We have collaborated and have seen this phenomenon unfold before us, not only in the church, but in our culture. And, you know, I just got back from South Africa, and we did the three-day seminars, one in Pretoria and one in Cape Town. And we saw the same thing there. In other words, the deeply hidden, trauma-based mind control victims were all over the place. We had 120 that came for training in Pretoria and almost the same amount in Cape Town. And it's no different there, Dr. Stan. I mean, the whole New World Order programming, the hybrid breeding program, it's exactly the same there. I've been invited to go to Germany and do a seminar there and do training there coming up this next year. It's a global phenomenon. It's not just here in America, although America is very saturated with this phenomenon. You know, the biggest problem, Dr. Stan, is pastors. Pastors, for whatever reason, they're either afraid of this or they deny it or they have their own mindset and they're not even open to even trying to understand this. But what I have found is that any church that is of salt and light, that is truly evangelical, 
the adversary has infiltrated people. Most of them are Christian, but they don't know what happened to them because of the very dense amnesia that is a result of chronic trauma in early childhood. We lived in South Africa, and when I was in South Africa in the mid-70s, I already became aware of the spiritual battle. You know, certainly the population over there, many, many of them are deeply involved in the occult. The occult plays a very important part in the life over there. Well, Pastor Doug was simply talking about here in the United States, where most of our ministers do not want to talk about this spiritual battle. They don't know about it. They're afraid of it. But are ministers here becoming more aware, or at least some of them becoming more aware, of the fact that behind everything going on politically and culturally and ideologically are this supernatural battle, that there really is another dimension, that there really are demonic spirits alive and well in our society today? Years ago, I used to travel to different churches that were seeking help. So there were some of the churches that were embracing the challenge to help people that are obviously manifesting dissociative identity disorders. They began to see that they have people in their congregations that needed help, but they didn't know what to do. So I would travel to go work with people and help train. A lot of them weren't the pastors, but they were people on the counseling staff. And so there are churches that do embrace this, but I think it's still a minority stand, unfortunately. So basically, Doug, do some of these people talk to you about certainly this whole idea of the world government? Do any of them ever discuss these concepts of the Illuminati or the fact that their families really are part and parcel of this world conspiratorial movement? Yes, most of the people I've worked with come from European descent. Their families are part of the European royalty. They have been taken all over the world to be involved with high-level rituals. They all talk about deep underground military bases where there is a vast army being assembled that will eventually assemble on the field of Armageddon to oppose Jesus Christ in his second return. In other words, if we go to Revelation 19, 19, and we see when Jesus Christ returns, on that battlefield there are assembled the kings of the earth and the enemies of God to wage war against the Lamb. Now the question is, how did they get there? In other words, at some point in history, this army had to be prepared, and the significant part of this army, in terms of the hierarchy of authority, these are already hybrids. All the people I've been working with for over 25 years, is the hybrid breeding program, just as it was in the days of Noah, has been going on for over 50 years, and when the time comes, and God is ultimately in charge of that, they are going to be released, and there is going to be a final war and conflict between the powers of darkness and Jesus Christ, as we see in Revelation 16, Revelation 17, Revelation 19, there is a coming war that will trump all other wars in history. Well, could you explain what you mean by hybrids for our listeners? I don't think that they understand that term. Would you mind explaining how this fits into the spiritual battle? If you go back to Genesis 3.15, we see in the proto-evangel there that with the disobedience of Adam and the subsequent fall, that there would be enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. So the seed of the woman, as we know from Galatians 3.16, is ultimately pointing to Christ, but Satan also has a seed. Now if we go to Genesis 6, 1 through 4, we see the first incursion of where the Beniha Elohim, the watchers, those angels there, cohabited with women, and as a result, as we see in Genesis 6, 4, there is a hybrid offspring. In other words, the union of a fallen angel with a woman produces a hybrid entity. They were referred to as Nephilim. You use the term watchers. Does this uh, refer to a fallen angel? Well, yeah, that comes from the book of Enoch. Those angels, the sons of God, were referred to as watchers. Those angelic beings are also used, I think, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 4, chapter 5. The watchers are used there as well as referring to in that case, I believe, elect angels. But these are fallen angels, and we know from Second Peter 2, 4, these particular angels involved in Genesis 6 were imprisoned for their rebellion, held there for a judgment. And another reference we see in Jude 6 and 7, that these particular class of angels involved in this incursion, they left their assigned sphere of rule, and they abandoned their habitation, that is, their form of creation to take on physicality in order to produce offspring. Now, the point is, why do they do this? It was to corrupt the human gene pool so that the Messiah couldn't come. We know from Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, that 
that Noah was perfect in his generations. The word perfect doesn't mean sinless. It means that his DNA was not corrupted as a result of the incursion that occurred in Genesis 6. Jesus referred to the days of Noah when he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be at the return of the Son of Man. So when we look back at the days of Noah, there was violence, and there was this attempt of the adversary to corrupt the seed of the woman so the Messiah couldn't come and be our Redeemer. And I think if people have to really analyze, of course, what it says there in Matthew 24, when Jesus was asked, you know, how will we know when you're going to return? And as it was in the days of Noah, and because the world was just plain evil in those days, and these demonic spirits permeated every aspect of society. The Nephilim were here at that time. They were the offspring. They were the offsprings of these demonic angels and women. And I suspect that the same thing is going on today. What are your thoughts? Well, this is the reports I have been receiving and hearing for the last 25 years. Women from different walks of life that haven't met. They report that at the age of 13, they have been prepped. They've been generationally selected. They've been prepped throughout their life. So at age 13, there is a conception event where they are brought into union with a fallen angel and produce these offspring. The difference is, is that the quintessential hybrid today is not a giant. The goal is to create a hybrid that looks just like us, only is super enhanced in every way. Intelligent, physically, they're referred to as the champions or the beautiful people. I've heard this for a number of years. This particular species that is reportedly hidden away, waiting for a disclosure event, that they're going to come forth under the ruse of aliens, but they are the quintessential man, that species to replace who we are, and according to the evolutionary lie and deception, man can now evolve to that higher level of humanity, which will be representative in this new hybrid species. Pastor Doug Riggs has been working for you know, a quarter of a century with these people, and so many of them have similar stories. Can some of these people who have been raised in these satanic families and these occult situations, can some of them certainly get rid of that and come into a personal relationship with our Lord? Yes, in fact, everyone that I have worked with were already Christian. If we understand the adversary, he cannot stop a person from being born again. But if he can capture that event, a new birth event, at the earliest possible level, then that part of the person's identity, that new birth identity that can be sequestered to severe trauma and dissociation and wrapped in spiritual death, then the person that is created off of that is fragmented and programmed so that the everyday presenting person will be completely amnesic to what has happened to them in that original new birth event. And so the goal is to release that new birth identity that's been targeted and taken captive so they can ultimately be, as James chapter 1 verse 4 says, whole, complete, and lacking in nothing. It's a long, challenging road, but I see God doing that, Dr. Stan. Let's go to Chuck, who's calling us from Michigan. Hi, Chuck. Do you have a question or comment? That Nephilim? I thought when uh, Noah got on the boat that every everybody died and everything was destroyed. So All right, fine. Let's, let's, let's just ask, because I think that's a very legitimate point that you've made. Pastor Doug, how would you respond to Chuck? How could we have Nephilim today? Yes, no, that's an excellent question. I think it was during the time of Jared when the first watchers came down, and there was a period of about five or 600 years in which this whole process grew and reached the point where God judged that generation, and only Noah and seven were saved. When that flood finally came, the caller, Chuck, is absolutely correct. All those hybrids were killed, and here's what the Jewish rabbis believe is that the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim became demons, whereas the fallen angels are a higher order in terms of the hierarchy of evil, but the disembodied spirits are demons. Now, if you go back to Genesis 6-4, it says that the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, that is the days of Noah, and also afterward. So if we go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, we see when the children of Israel, the seed of Abraham, came in to conquest Canaan, that there were hybrids there. According to G.H. Pember in his book, Earth's Earliest Ages, which has just been released again by Tom Horn, Pember and Dr. Bollinger, they said there was a second and more confined incursion or eruption that produced hybrids that were in the land in the conquest, again, Numbers 1333, 
And then G.H. Pember says that the third and final incursion will be just prior to the return of the Son of Man. Well, I think it's important for Chuck to understand that fallen angels after the flood would have relationships with women. And that's where the new Nephilim came from, Chuck. It's not the old Nephilim we still hear. It's the new Nephilim that have been formed. I would just comment that angels all through the Bible can materialize primarily in human form. My guest is Pastor Doug Riggs, who actually works with many of these people with multiple personalities, dissociative personalities, and they will tell him what's really going on in the occult world because they're from occult families. And, of course, Damien had called in from Santa Cruz and certainly questioning, you know, well, how could we have these Nephilim today? We had Nephilim before the flood. That these fallen angels had relationships with women, and the offspring was Nephilim. And after the flood, why, there's still fallen angels out there, and there's still women, and unfortunately, the same thing is going on today. Yes, Damien, these beings can actually materialize, and this is what people don't understand. There is a supernatural element out there. There is another dimension, and that is where these angels exist, but they can cross over into our dimension. Anything else you want to ask, Damien? Yes, I had a comment, too, is that popular culture today actually promotes this. There's a popular song on the radio by a pop musician by the name of Katy Perry, and her song is called Supernatural, and she actually sings about this being promoted and played to people of today. You're absolutely right. Pastor Doug, how would you respond to what Damien's saying? He's saying that, you know, they have these songs you know, on, uh, on the radio and on television that promote this sort of thing. Yes, in fact, at that particular song, I've seen it, where the whole thing is having sexual relationships with these entities, and in the end, you see a hybrid. She's walking with a hybrid, and so the culture is being prepped and prepared for what's called the disclosure event. You who are listening, if you just type in disclosure with Dr. Greer, there are many people out there that are looking forward to these advanced species that they refer to as aliens. They're not aliens. They're bred and born right here. But the whole deception is that they're going to come as our saviors and lead us to the next evolutionary development and phase of mankind. It's all deception. But we're being prepared in the media and specifically music and the example here, Katy Perry, they're promoting this whole thing that is something we should embrace and accept. Damien, have anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? I think it's pretty scary that that is happening, <laughs> and young people are listening to this like a catchy song, and I found myself, and then I'm like, wait, what is this? This is crazy what these people are singing about. And you can see it on TV, as the pastor was saying the whole thing is a lie. What they want you to believe, of course, is that there are UFOs out there, and they're coming from another planet, another galaxy, something of this sort. And supposedly there's these aliens coming in from these other galaxies. This is not true. I believe there are UFOs, but I believe that there are manifestations of this other dimension. I believe that there are beings on these. But these beings can materialize and dematerialize because they are from the other dimension. They do not want people to understand the spiritual battle that's going on. Damien, they want people to honestly believe that there are aliens from other planets. UFOs are real, but they're not certainly from other planets. God bless. Thanks so much for calling. Okay, fine, Pastor Doug. Would you agree or disagree with that? Because you don't have to agree with me. I'd like to know what you think. Yeah, I agree. When it comes to the UFOs and the work that I've been working with with survivors, there are two categories. There are those UFOs that appear as light orbs. These are most likely manifestations of fallen angels or demons, and they are a part of the mix. But there, there are also those that are actually physical, and those that are in these craft are, I believe, from what's been reported, are hybrids. In fact, all a person has to do is go into Amazon under books and just type in man-made UFOs. And you'll be surprised at how many researchers have actually documented some of the deep underground military black ops. World War II, these craft have evolved in their development and they're a part of the underground military or the shadow government military, however you want to refer to it. But the thing is, of course, people don't dare talk about this. It would cost them their lives. When you begin right. to getting into this, of course, basically they will do everything they can to conceal it. 
Pastor Doug, one of the, the most difficult things, I think, is for the average individual in America, especially if they're not a Christian, to believe that there is a supernatural element. If you're not a Christian, you can't believe this sort of thing. In fact, it's much easier to believe that UFOs are from another galaxy rather than to believe that they're from another dimension. Have you run into this? Well, yes, and I think there's a lot of good authors that have addressed this and exposed this for what it really is. Uh, people have read Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural by Lynn Marzulli or Cosmic Chess Match. My friend Doug Woodward has written Power Quest 1 and 2. There's another book that is called The Omega Conspiracy, Satan's Final Assault on the Kingdom of God by I.D.E. Thomas. I think that was a groundbreaking book in its time. Again, it's called The Omega Conspiracy, Satan's Final Assault on the Kingdom of God. He goes into this whole hybrid plan of the adversary and how the whole UFO phenomenon fits right in as a part of the ruse and the deception that the enemy wants mankind to believe that these are aliens or extraterrestrials when they're not. There are both demons and also hybrids involved in this final deception. Well, I think our job, of course, is to try to get people to understand, first of all, the Christians. And, you know, simply it's, it's amazing. There's a fellow named Jacques Vollet. I think that's his name, but he's certainly not a Christian at all. But he was a UFO researcher for many years. And he finally came to the conclusion, after studying this, the UFOs were metaphysical. And I think that there's some people who are not Christians who've really looked into this, and when they try to find some logical explanation, they've come to the same conclusion that you and I as Christians have come to. Yes, and I would mention also the work of Dr. David Jacob. He wrote a book called The Threat. And you could go in and type in his name, The Threat, and watch the videos. He's not a professing Christian, but he's interviewed hundreds of these people that have talked about their experience of alien abduction, and how the experimentation, extraction of ovum and sperm... Hold that thought, hold that thought. We'll be back in just a moment. Pastor Doug, will you tell our listeners how they can get to your website, how they can get your information and material that you put out based upon your years of experience? Sure. It's Doug Riggs, R-I-G-G-S, dot org. And when people go to the website, if they go to the Bite Show... I've interviewed Dr. Preston Bailey. I've interviewed other folks on there on this subject. Also, if they go to under the tab SRA DID, which is Satanic Ritual Abuse Dissociative Identity Disorder, but it's SRA DID. If they go to that page, I have a whole series and listing of subjects that address this particular phenomenon. And I would simply comment that we actually carry material put out by L.A. Marzulli. We have his Watchers DVDs, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we actually have a couple of books that he's written. One of them is called Alien Encounters. And the information is fascinating. We have Doug Woodward's books. I think it's Power Quest 1 and Power Quest 2. We carry these. We carry this information because we want you to have the opportunity to get the information. You must understand these are not imaginary, they're real, but they're manifestations of the other dimension. Let's go to Lauren, who's calling from the state of Washington. Do you have a question or comment for us? I do. I'm I'm interested in this multiple personality thing. Um, How did they figure out that this was going on? Are these people just repressing these memories? I've heard of things like this. I've heard of people saying that they're having relations with supernatural beings. And I felt like it was a demonic thing, but I just wanted a little bit more information about how this all kind of came together. Well, yes, there's several different things that there are issues here. First of all, multiple personality disorder, which has now been classified and designated as dissociative identity disorder, is a result of chronic trauma in early childhood. So the child, when they're overwhelmed with terror and pain, their identity fragments. This is listed in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. It's one of the accepted diagnoses. That in and of itself is a separate phenomenon. Now, what the cult does, when I say cult, are those that are committed to bringing in the Antichrist. They will use trauma. They will employ trauma to cause the person to split. And then the part of the identity splits. Then they channel in spirits to be attached to the fragmentation of the person's soul and identity. And then the person is actually structured through the fragmentation by the powers of darkness to create a whole inner world. 
that phenomenon is in and of itself. Now, many of these people have been selected, the women, to become breeders. And they're also multiple, that is, they have been fragmented, but then they have been selected to be breeders to create an end-time army and to create a hybrid species. So I don't know if that addressed all your questions or not, but this particular phenomenon is well known by many, many counselors. And any chronic trauma in early childhood, it doesn't have to be satanic ritual abuse. It could be incest or any kind of trauma, like the Three Faces of Eve or the movie Sybil. There was no indication that it was satanic in terms of ritual, but that abuse did cause the fragmentation of the identity. So that person needs to have a lot of therapy, healing, counseling for their identity to come back together into wholeness. And basically, it's and not imaginary, Lauren. It's very real, and we've even met a few yes, people I, like I, this. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I believe I believe that it is real. These women later on have children. They are breeders. They are used for that, and they know that they're going to be used for this. It's not that they know it right away, because they're groomed and prepared from earliest childhood. So one of the right. chief characteristic features of chronic trauma in early childhood is amnesia. So what happens when the person gets older and the amnesia begins to break down, then they begin to get in touch with how they've been used to be breeders. They don't know it as long as amnesia is there. And until that begins to break down, then they begin to see how they've been programmed and how they've been selected as a part of the Satan's end time agenda to bring in this massive army that ultimately is going to be directed against God on the battlefield of Armageddon at Revelation 19.19. And you know, one of the most interesting things, Lauren, uh, I've been at this for about 20 years, as you know, at least as far as studying this sort of thing. And about the time we first got started doing our radio program is about 1992, 20 years ago. Why, of course, uh, we would get some of the people coming and telling about their experiences and how they've been utilized in these demonic experiences they've had. And then suddenly there came out something called the false memory syndrome. That was basically saying, this is all made up. This doesn't exist at all. These are all false memories that are being implanted by psychologists and they're being implanted by people who are trying to help these people, but they're giving them these ideas. It's all a false memory. And they had organizations all across the country affiliated with the central organization on false memories. And who was funding it? Why the CIA, and who are the leaders of it? CIA psychiatrists. Why, in heaven's name, would CIA psychologists and psychiatrists like Jolly West, you know, he was a CIA psychiatrist. He was a fellow who was down there visiting Tim McVeigh all the time. He was in prison before he supposedly wow. was executed. And basically, there were a number of these key CIA people putting forward this idea. It's all false memories. Did you ever run into that, Pastor Doug? Oh, absolutely. In fact, the CIA program or the MK Ultra and Bluebird programming, most of the people I've worked with have been subjected to that. But the deeper level programming goes way much deeper to cover up the European royal families. But many of these people have been used to be structured as MK Ultra candidates to be operatives in terms of government function and to be used as sex slaves and those kinds of things in the government. But yeah, this is well documented by a number of writers. I know Dr. Colin Roth has written books on this. He rewrote his book, I think it's called The CIA Doctors. But yeah, this phenomenon is well known by those that are working in this field. I have another question. Who is raising these children? That's my first question. And my next question is, how do we get more information about this so that we can be more educated on this? The universal reports that I have received throughout the years that there are deep military underground bases. They call them military. They're not military as we know it. But these deep underground bases, they're very vast. They're very expensive. If you just Google in D-U-M-B as an acronym, deep underground military bases, these are the kinds of facilities where these are being kept until the time of disclosure. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 says, The mystery, that is the secret of iniquity, is currently operational until the time of the revealing of the Antichrist. So all of this revealing, they're being kept until Antichrist is being revealed. Now, as far as information, I've dedicated as much as I can on my website to educate people to understand this. As I mentioned earlier, on my website, DougRiggs.org, under The Bite Show, I've done interviews on this and other interviews on this phenomenon, on transhumanism. And then under the SRADID, 
I have a whole series of articles there that describe dissociative identity disorder. There's various kinds of resources there, including a whole history of Dr. Mengele and his role. I've tried to at least help address some of this. And basically, of course, I think that most of the people who are experts on this we have on our program from time to time. In fact, we're having L.A. Marzulli is going to be with us on the weekend. Uh, he's did a lot of work on this. Tom Horn, we carry many of his books here. The Woodward we have and done a number of interviews with him. L.A. Marzulli has an excellent website. Tom Horn has an excellent website. The information is there, and we can help you get it. We want people to understand what this is about. It is so incredible. People say it just couldn't be true. It sounds like something, you know, just came out of a movie. It does, but the trouble is it's a true movie. Anything else you wanted to ask, Lauren, before we let you go? No, I just appreciate you educating us on this. I really appreciate it. I happen to be studying it in my Bible study right now, and I'm amazed. I'm just amazed. It is amazing. God bless, and thanks very much. You mentioned that a lot of ministers really don't want to get into this discussion of these supernatural elements. Is this because they're fearful? Or have actually these people, at least some of them, infiltrated the church to neutralize its effectiveness at this time? What I've seen, any church that is a viable church that represents salt and light in this world, that church will be targeted by the enemy. His most effective means of infiltration is through the complex trauma-based mind control victim because these people don't even know they're victims. And they can be brought in under assignment with various hidden personalities that are assigned to carry out to bring down pastors, to infiltrate churches, go into the nursery, to abuse the children. So you don't know that. I mean, these people you can't tell by looking at them. So it's a very effective way to infiltrate the church. Now, if pastors do recognize this, they just don't have the time to get involved because it takes specialized training. You have to not only understand deliverance in its proper biblical framework, but you have to understand trauma. Not everything that manifests is a demon. If someone has got severe trauma, you've got to recognize the symptomatology and know how to work with this. This takes experience, it takes training, and most pastors just don't have the time. What I have experienced personally is that we were in a wonderful church with a wonderful minister, and one person was there who wanted to get rid of that minister. Everybody else in the church loved the minister, and yet this person was able to manipulate things and get rid of the minister. I think this is a pattern that's used over and over again to destroy ministers who try to talk about this sort of thing. Have you run into that? Oh, absolutely. Working with people that can be truly born again, in their presenter world, they're just like anybody else, but behind that front person, there can be a whole structured carousel of different parts that are amnesia to each other, that are structured, and they're held together by principalities and powers so that these people are actually a weapons platform. So certain separated personalities or dissociated personality states can be used to channel spirits, to channel curses, to release powers, to bring in all kinds of corruption, confusion, demoralization, discouragement. I mean, these people are weapons. They've been engineered to become spiritual weapons. And I've experienced this over and over again. And if you're not properly trained and experienced spiritually, this can really bring a person down very quickly. We have to know what it means to be dressed in the whole armor of God, be living in close fellowship with God, be living in community with one another, and know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but can defeat these powers. But it's a real war, and if we're ignorant of the warfare, then we can become casualties. It's important that we as Christians recognize that we are living in a very unique time in history, that I believe that we are at the end of the end of this age. I believe that because of Israel has come back into the land, and from 1948 until the second coming of Christ, we are living in the generation that Jesus Christ will return. We don't know the day or the hour, but we are living in the season. We need to be ready. We need to be walking close with the Lord and make sure our lives are in alignment with Him and walking in holiness and the fear of the Lord and being aggressive while we have time to lead people to Jesus Christ, to have tracts, believe it, we go to the restaurant, put them in your bills, be aggressive in reaching people for Christ and being about the Lord's business until He comes.
The scriptures talk about how fallen angels had intimate relationships with women, and the offspring of that intimate relationship were the Nephilim. Where in the scriptures does it talk about that? Yes, well, Genesis 6, 1 through 4, it says the Bani Elohim, and that particular term is used in Job 1, 6, 2, 1, and 38, verse 7. These are angels. And how do they do that? Jude, verses 6 and 7, he tells exactly how they did that. They abandoned their science sphere of rule, and they took on physicality. They abandoned their dwelling place. And that particular word, of koinome, there in Jude 6, is used only in one other place in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2, which refers to the future resurrection spiritual body of believers. Okay, so, we, we have one more caller. Let's we'll take that. This will be the last call. Paul, do you have a question for our guest? Well, my question would be the, uh, the training of your ministers. We just came back from doing two training seminars in South Africa, and on our website we have eight segments of that training seminar that we did in Pretoria. That has been posted for those that would like to listen to that seminar and it's all designed to train anyone who desires to have any kind of training. And I'm not the only one presenting. We have people that have come out of the project that are SRA DID. They travel with me, and they're sharing their testimonies, and they're part of the training program. We're out of time, and I appreciate you being with us tonight, Pastor Doug Riggs. And you go to his website, get his information, vitally important. God bless, and thanks very much for being with us tonight. Yes, thank you, Dr. Sam.